Welcome to worship at Market Street Presbyterian Church. We acknowledge that this is Reformation Sunday. So we are going to be singing the great hymn of Reformation, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. But before we do so, we need to have the scripture that is based upon Psalm 46. So please join me in the call to worship. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, nor the shape of our hearts. Please stand if you're able and sing our opening hymn.
You know, on this Sunday morning that we mark as Reformation Sunday, we acknowledge that the words of this great hymn Martin Luther has given to the world are still true to this day, that we all struggle in this world. But there's a word that will fell him, and that word is the word of God. Let the word of God so prevail in this service of worship that it will dispel the powers of darkness in the lives of any who hear the word of the Lord. Be present, O God, in this service of worship that we may render unto you honor, praise, and glory. For we ask this through Jesus Christ. Let us continue in a time of confession before God. Let us confess our sins. Join me in the prayer in the bulletin. Almighty God, we confess that we cannot see your image in one another. We call others sinners, but you call us by our names. We misjudge one another and underestimate ourselves, and we undervalue all creation. Pardon us, Holy One. By your grace, reveal to us your vision for the world, that we may see all people through eyes of care and hearts of compassion. Amen. From Psalm number 85, verses 8 and 9. He will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. The good news of the gospel is that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. point in the service, let us bestow the peace of Christ upon one another. Peace, Amanda.
You know, God gives us many talents. And I think probably one of the greatest sins we ever have is when we fail to share those talents with others. Can you imagine how horrible it would be if we didn't share our talents? This morning, we're going to take a little opportunity to express our appreciation to somebody's or to people who have shared talents with us. That's the employees of the church. I was asked to say a few words about each of them, and so I'm going to give that a try. The hymns you hear every morning, whether it's sung by one person, four, fifty, doesn't matter, are the input of John Hutchison. John is our maestro. He selects our Sunday morning hymns and he makes sure that there is someone there to sing those hymns, even if it's John himself. The church decorations. Everyone, ever wonder where this comes from? They come from John. I don't know, he's got a room downstairs. It's got all kinds of stuff in it. John is that individual who provides the grease that makes our church grow. John, we hope you never run out of grease. <laughs> Troy. I don't know where we found him. He, he's the guy with the magic fingers. You know, we're, we're very, very fortunate to have somebody that God has given that kind of talent to that we can have every Sunday morning. You know, I am never sure, now maybe you're different than I am, but I'm never sure whether Troy is accompanying the accompanist or the accompanist is accompanying Troy. You just are never sure. Yeah, I, I've tried to understand where Troy gets all his talent. Frankly, I think he gets it because he sings each song that he plays. Troy, it's great to have you with us. Cheryl. You know, I, I, I thought when we hired Cheryl, we had another Anita in the making. I was wrong. Cheryl is a secretary in her own right. She greets people with enthusiasm, respond, responds to their needs, I think in a very, very positive manner. You know, I served as an administrator in the Lima Public Schools for over 20 years. And I would have loved to have had Cheryl from day one. Cheryl, Congratulations. Anita. Uh, you, you, you can hold off. You, you can, or you can tell them afterwards. Can we run the church without Anita? You know, I'd have to say no. You, she has yet to find, from my estimation, any boundaries to her job. Whatever task you have, Nita either has already done it or can tell you where to go to get it. And she has a remarkable, a remarkable understanding of each member of the, our congregation. She shows compassion and sometimes not compassion, but she shows it anyway for all who enter her office. Jim, I have to say, it's got to be difficult to live with somebody of that kind of perfection. <laughs> she is Market Street, parts of Presbyterian Church. I thought Dottie would be here this morning. I'm just going to say a few words about her, whether she's here or not. 
Dotty is not a substitute minister. You know, I thought we, we, we'd run Dotty in when Ken would be gone. And it just isn't it. Dotty in herself is a minister, period. She tackles problems in a forceful manner and she has compassion for those who have problems. I don't know about you, but I have a tough time going along without Dottie. And last but not least, Pastor Ken. You know, in the early conference that he and I had, I don't just remember what it was, but it was an early one. He said to me, if I have just one person, one person, I'll preach the word of God to that person. And he lives by that statement. The word of God just seems to set the direction of his life. He approaches the needs of the congregation with love and understanding. And to know Ken is really to know a man of God. It was a good decision to have you come. Overall, let me say this. I've been a member of Marcus Street Presbyterian Church for 50 years. I haven't seen a group like this in 50 years. Let's give them a good old Presbyterian. Congratulations. Thank you, Don. In light of that, I'd like to a couple of announcements today. Following the service, there will be a luncheon in the, uh, sponsored by the Hospitality Committee, and this is to honor our great staff and all that they do for our congregation and for our community. Uh, Wednesday at noon is the healing service in the sanctuary. Wednesday Bible study is at three o'clock. Next Sunday is All Saints Day, and we will be honoring those of our congregation who have departed from this life in the past year. On Sunday, November the 13th, will be Harvest Sunday. We will be collecting canned fruits, vegetables, meats, commercial-sized cans are needed for our daily bread, and family-sized cans for the Veterans Food Pantry. These can be brought to the church at any time. There is a table that is set up for the donations in the hallway upstairs. On Tuesday, November the 29th, we will be having our neighborhood supper. Help is needed if you are interested. Please contact Julie Starr or Margaret Stevenson. Please check your bulletin for other upcoming events. Are there any announcements from the congregation? Seeing none, Please pray with me. Dear Lord, we thank you for bringing us together today in this beautiful day. Be with us as we go about our work and our play this week. Open Now open our hearts and our ears so that we may hear your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first reading of scripture today is from Exodus chapter 19, verse 1 through 8. On the third new moon, after the Israelites had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that very day, they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They journeyed from Rephan, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, the Lord called to him from the mountain. Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. 
These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses went, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken we will do. Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thank you, John. Thank you, Amanda. We really appreciate that. And thank you, Troy, too. I know you're always in the background there with the music. Our second reading of Holy Scripture is from Paul's letter to, or Peter's letter to the saints. 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. Hear the word of God. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and guile and sincerity, envy and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, come to him a living stone. Though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. 
For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. This honor, then, is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe. The stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the excellence of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The word of the Lord. Well, in 1517, an Augustinian monk took a series of theses that he wanted to debate, discuss, or dialogue with the Roman Catholic Church and nailed them to the door of the chapel at Wittenberg. We acknowledge that that is the beginning of what is called the Reformation. Now, Martin Luther, this Augustinian monk, had three primary doctrines to give to us. First, the Word of God is prime in all things. What it says comes first. Second, we are justified by faith before the sight of Almighty God and not by works or by a system imposed upon us by a church. Thirdly, he called it the priesthood of all believers. And that's the subject of my message today, the priesthood of all believers. And the key word for this is direct. Direct. And so I typed in the word direct to just see what would come up on a search engine. Just one word, direct. Direct TV. Direct insurance quotes. Direct payment. Direct entertainment. Direct express. Direct auto. Direct shopping. Direct access. Direct deposit. Direct pizza and burgers. <laughs> and I clicked. And they had already mentioned Martin Luther. Martin Luther was like fifth or sixth. I don't remember the exact order. But I'm sitting there. Who could it be? Who could it be? Who could be the most important that they think? And then it dawned on me. Gutenberg. Gutenberg? The man that invented the movable type printing press. Because... The German translation of Holy Bible would be on the press and mass scale of the translation of the Bible into German, mass scale of Luther's pamphlets all across Europe. It's like saying the invention of the internet and people going online. It's like saying that. Mass communication. And, of course, Gutenberg and his movable type press now allows the people, the believers in churches, to have a holy Bible and to read for themselves about a holy God and a holy relationship. So knowledge of God is direct through the holy word of God. And thirdly, communicating with God is direct. Prayer can be direct not through the mediation of a priest. And I know if you watch the old, old movies, you'll see that <clears throat> when telephones first came out, folks in their home had to ring and ring up and call the operator of the local town and say, operator, get me, get me so-and-so in town or, or send my call to City Hall or whatever. They had to go from their home to the operator and the operator to the one that they wanted to talk to. My sister, she was an operator 
back in the 70s in Bell Telephone, in Pittsburgh area. And then I remember how uh, the system got so automated that operators were irrelevant and not needed. Now, in a way, this is what Martin Luther is saying about prayer. You don't need to go to the priest so the priest prays the prayer for you. You can directly go to God in prayer, in communication. Communicating with God is direct because Paul says to Timothy, there is one mediator, the man Christ Jesus. In other words, it's Christ that allows you to go to the Father and not a priest in the local congregation. And lastly, sacrifices to God are direct and not mediated through a priest. Now you might stumble on this a little bit, but hang in there with me. In the Old Testament, the priests offered sacrifices to God in your behalf. In the Roman Catholic system that Martin Luther knew, the priest was offering the sacrifice of the bread and wine to become the body and blood of Christ. And Martin Luther says, we're all priests. We all can offer sacrifice. And you might say, well, gee, Pastor Ken, I really don't know what you're talking about. Will you listen up? What it tells us in Holy Scripture. Paul tells us in Romans. Therefore, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or your reasonable worship. In other words, your very body is the sacrifice to God. And notice he said living sacrifice. This is nothing at all about slaying people. This is about living. That every day you get up and you have your body and you say, oh, maybe you're not too pleased with your body at times, but you still have your body. This body is a living sacrifice to a holy God. Complete and total. Now, another place sacrifice is mentioned is in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So anytime you praise God, that's a sacrifice of praise. And I'm so delighted that John and Amanda sang, Praise Him, Praise Him. I actually had that particular hymn in mind for our service. <laughs> and lo and behold, I find out John had selected that for a special number. But you see, Praise Him, Praise Him. All the day long. Now, you are offering to God sacrifices of praise. In other words, coming out of your mouth. It's what God wants. It's what God w desires, you see. Now, most of corrupted Christianity is about what we want. We want. We want. Have you ever stopped and paused and asked yourself the question, what does God want? Well, he wants the sacrifice of praise. In other words, he wants your tongue and your mouth to sing and praise of him and to tell of him. 
fact, our next hymn we'll sing is, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise. The sacrifice of praise. So you see what Martin Luther was trying to tell the believers in the 1500s, and he's trying to tell us today is that forgiveness comes direct. Knowledge of God is direct through the word. Praying, communicating with God is direct through the name of Jesus. And the sacrifices that were offered by Old Testament priests or even by Roman Catholic priests are no longer necessary because you are the sacrifice of praise in a body, a living sacrifice, according to Paul. So the implication is that the priests were no longer needed in Christianity. Now this greatly impacted uh, all of Europe because the whole system was built around the priests. And it might be a lot like saying that steam engines are no longer needed. Lima, Ohio. The diesel has arrived. And so Lima, Ohio suffered a little bit because steam engines were no longer needed. And so you can see how the Reformation caused great upheaval in Europe. Now the responsibility is in every believer's hands. In other words, every believer is expected to be just like the priests. And to do essentially what the priest does. God wants a kingdom of priests. We are told that in Exodus chapter 19. We are told that again by the apostle Peter in 1 Peter chapter 2. And we will behold a kingdom of priests in the book of Revelation who are forever praising God and glorifying God. And that is the essence, that is the summation of why you were created, why I was created. We were created not so much for our own pleasure, but for the pleasure of Almighty God. And how does he get pleasure? He gets his pleasure from our praises and our love. You are a kingdom of priest, Market Street Presbyterian Church. Heavenly Father, I ask that you inspire each and every one to perform those priestly duties that were assigned in Old Testament. That is, to pray unto you and to offer sacrifice unto you and to allow your word to be communicated. Let every believer see and every believer know that he or she can directly experience all these things. We are the kingdom of priests that you have desired to have. We pray it all in Jesus' holy name, our great high priest. Amen. O for a thousand tongues to sing thy great Redeemer's praise.
we continue offering our praise to God through the giving of our tithes, offerings, and gifts. desire praise O God and in this service of worship we do surrender not only these tithes offerings and gifts but we surrender our bodies that our bodies may be a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to you in your service of worship we pray this all through Jesus Christ our Lord who gave his all in our behalf amen you may be seated We'd like to see if there are any prayer concerns of God's people. If so, please wait for the handheld microphone to come your way.
Um, just another reminder, I hope everyone can stay after service for uh, our celebration of staff. We've got a variety of sandwiches from Jimmy John's and a big, beautiful, delicious cake and punch. So uh, please stay. If you can't, grab a, a sandwich and go. But we would love you to stay and celebrate all our wonderful staff. Thank you. Let us come before God in prayer. God, we acknowledge the great impact that the life and teachings of Martin Luther had upon all of Europe and trickled all the way down to this very moment here in America to our church. We acknowledge our Heavenly Father that the reason he was able to do this was because he studied thy word and loved thy word. Place within each and every one of us that which was in him, that is, to study thy word and love thy word, and to cherish thy word. We ask that you would make us grow in your word so that we could be strong because the great powers of the world are getting stronger and stronger to pull us away from the true things of God. Help us, Lord, to be immovable, even as Martin Luther was immovable in his stance upon your word. And no matter what emerges in the world, help us to make our stand, even as he did, upon your holy word. So that it is the word that is final. It is the word that is definitive. It is the word that has the answers. It is the word that brings life. We ask that that life will come to our land. The life that was discovered through this monk and then through many, many others who took heed to what he had to say. So we pray our Heavenly Father for our land, that there be, in a sense, a reformation in our land of people coming back to the Word, back to experiencing His primacy over the philosophies and over the ways of the world, that there is no other Word except the Holy Word of God, and that alone is to be listened to, despite all that we hear coming to us from various sources. Send thy spirit, O Lord, to confirm the truth of the word in the hearts and lives and believers of people, even as you sent your spirit to confirm the truth in that day and age that we call the Reformation, where so many, so many realized that the answers are truly in the holy word of God. We pray that that awakening and rise will come again in our land where people will rediscover the truth is in the Word of God and that that is our only hope and that we can flee to the one who is the mighty fortress. and We can speak those words that will bring down all the sinful ways we see around us. Help us, our Heavenly Father, to remain steadfast and immovable on that which Martin Luther has delivered unto this church and many, many Protestant churches throughout the land, that your word is absolutely central in all things. We pray all this and we pray for those that we know who are in need of our prayers, friends, neighbors, relatives, church members, and ask through Jesus Christ our Lord, you provide for their needs and lead them to Christ so that they are strengthened in their faith in all that goes on in their life and here at the church. We pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord who taught us to pray together saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen our concluding hymn is a little bit lighter than our opening hymn and that is all things bright and beautiful
So I know what hymn to sing when I get up in the morning and look out in my backyard and see that groundhog. <laughs> all creatures, great and small, all things wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Go forth from this service and rejoice in the world around you and realize it is God's world. He has created it and he has allowed us to share in it.